Hi folks, today we are going to discuss about a research paper, Distance Supervision for Relation Extraction Without Label Data. This paper has been written by Mike Mintz, Stephen Bills, Ryan Snow, Dan Juraski. So now, uh, what's the gist of the paper? Uh, let me open the summary page in which probably we'll be discussing more detail. All right, so as the name suggests, it is a relationship extraction without need of any labeling. So what do you mean by that? Let me explain in a more clear scenario. So traditionally, what when we need a relationship mapping like between two entities, for example, uh, we want to relate well, what is the relation between Paris and Mont Martin or what is the relation between WW and Vince McMahon. So how we are going to do that? We make a classifier. To make a classifier, we need a label data. And to label data, we need some human intervention or probably use some, some automated mean, but we do need to write the custom code for that. So that's uh, what the gist of paper is, uh, that uh, we don't need to label any data. The algorithm will label the data for us. That's pretty much convenient because it takes up, saves up manual effort, cost, time, and everything else. So what does it do in the background? Let's discuss. So what it is actually doing is it is using an external database, which is free based database. So it is kind of a database which has been uh, which contains a lot of information from a variety of data sources, maybe Wikipedia or something else. So in terms of relationship extraction for the entity relationship mapping, it contains nearly about 7,300 relations in which uh, we have 9 million entities and there are 116 million inst instances of those relations occurring between those entities. So we are, going to leverage the existing knowledge which is present in a freebie database for our existing purposes that's what's the gist of paper so think of it like uh, instead of learning from supervised classification of labeled text we are learning from supervised classification by database so here we are replacing the lab manual labeling with a database. So that is what is going on right now. So let me just discuss the algorithm. It will be all the clearer in a few seconds. So uh, think of you are having a new potential document comes into picture. Then what it's going to do is uh, we are going to apply name NER on that. Uh, it could be a stand for NER. In this paper, they have used their custom NER. So it will tag the norm, normal nouns and other things like it will tag uh, Paris as location, WWE as something, Vince McMahon as person, Mighty Wagon probably as location, something like that, right? So the first step is to run the NER on text. So after that NER, we get the entity. So entity is basically a noun or the NER, NER that has like a location, place, some um, person, organization, etc., etc. So we take out those entities and search for those, that entity, suppose we pick the two entity and we look for that entities in freebie database, freebies. So if any relation is already there between those two entities, for example, uh, New Delhi is a capital of Delhi. So, or Delhi is the capital of India. So if they're in relation containing a term Delhi in India, in freeways database, it is going to extract all those relations. So now uh, we can end up having one relation or we can end up having 10 relation or probably n number of relations so uh, we do this process for each and every sentence and each and every documents so we end up having tag data of thousands of probably millions of samples the larger the 
corpus of documents we have, the more tags we, tag we get from the Freebase database. So now we have entities and their relation based on the previous knowledge, which is already been there in the Freebase database. Now, we need to build a classifier. So to build a classifier, we have those, you know, nave thing like entity one, entity two and relation, but we cannot just feed that into classifier. We need to derive some feature out of sentences. So how are we are going to derive the features out of sentences that will like uh, this uh, feature engineering come to picture. So we can write our own feature, but um, the author of the research paper had write, written their own research features. So they have two kinds of features, uh, which are lexical and syntactic features. So uh, let's uh, dive what the lexical features are. So they are nothing but uh, like a sequence of words between two entities. So suppose if we are saying that um, we have a sentence like astronomer Edwin Hubble was born in Marshall, Missouri. So this is our first entity. This is our second entity. So was born in will be there, like here. So the part of speech of these words, like we can just post tag those words and can also have them in our feature vectors. Uh, and the flag indicating the name and the first, or first or last in the sentence. So again, that's a binary feature. So a, a window of K was the left of the entity one and they're part of speech tag like this one. Left window, right window, etc. etc. So now, we have lexical feature, we also have syntactic features, which make use of a dependency parser. They have their own version of uh, dependency parser. Probably let me just open that uh, document uh, in which it would be more clear. So they have mentioned that they have used Minipa. Um, in their dependency parser, so what they do is uh, they are just going to run that uh, dependency parser on that uh, sentence, and we will have a, end up having a nice parse tree. So based on the parse tree, they are going to drive these features like um, dependency path between two entities. Uh, again, the path in between the two entities, which is was well spawned in, and uh, for each entity, a uh, one window node that is not a part of a dependency part path. So what is a window node? It, it's just a node connecting one of the two entities and not was the dependency part. Again, again, it's some node which is connecting these two entities. Uh, so again, they are going to use them. That probably can are in more details. So I might not really explain it in a more clear sense. Probably when you're going to read it, you will have a better sense. They're using, but this is pretty much the gist. You can have your own features there. Like uh, you don't have to use the exact same feature. You can drive your own. So one thing uh, okay so now another part so they are not just using this uh, feature independently they're using as a conjunctive feature so they are going to concatenate these these features probably with some real mechanism so now one thing i want to um, tell you guys is uh, that's a kind of a you know uh, confusion right now is uh, they have these features like they are saying there are three uh, lexical feature nine syntactic features so whether they they we are going to combine all of them or we are going to feed them as 12 different rows so uh, according to my understanding there are different row vectors so this is the first row vector the second row vector then we have 12 row vectors uh, so in which we'll have that entity one entity two and relation entity one entity two and relation so we so for this sentence we end up having 12 different relations or 20 occurring here and based on uh, whatever algorithm we are going to choose it is going to pick the best out of them or probably it learn from the best relation so uh, now like, let's again go and dive into that uh, so uh, it's, uh, this is pretty much it um, so so once we have the features uh, and uh, from thousands of documents we have millions of sentences and from million sentences again we have millions of features or row vectors rather row vectors so we can build our uh, classifier on top of them they have used a logistic classifier with some variation 
um, you can use a you know, like probably another classifier. And we build the classifier, and then at runtime, how what you are going to do is we are going to run this classifier on newly formed sentences. So how we are going to do that? So whenever sentence come, we are just going to again use the NER. We are again going to do like now. Uh, the handcraft features and we are going to run the classifier and it will give a priority score to each in, to each relation and we pick the relation with maximum priority that's how we end up having like these two entities that belong to this relation so now based on that uh, whole process uh, here are some interesting outcomes that we are able to get which are not present in the freebase database so what are the outcomes like they are able to relate that Paris and Montreal are actually locations and they are contains type of relationship. And my team back in Cincinnati actually are musician and artists and probably, I guess, Mighty Wagon is a music artist that uh, sung Cincinnati, something like that, I don't know about them. But uh, okay, nationality, like Marvin, UN, Hins, Dog, belongs to Netherlands and similarly like other like people person profession so thomas mallon is a judge by profession so that's uh, interesting things that you are able to understand and they have presented what are their top relations i guess it's a relation it's a list of their top relations that they have presented here so this is i guess pretty much it uh one last thing one last thing is um so when you are going to build a classifier again, uh, you're going uh, based on the previous, you know, when you are going to run that uh, relations like this uh, feature generation on the data set, you're going, only going to get positive, positive labels, but what about the negative features, labels? When you're building a classifier, you have both positive and negative labels. So you, what you can do is you can just create on your negative labels or features just pick the random unrelated relations from the free beta database like pick any two relation two entities which doesn't have any relation between them and probably just derive features based on that and take this a negative feature set and then you can build your classifier and have the results so it's pretty interesting technique actually so what we what we need on is only documents and we are going to take existing knowledge from the freebase database which will end up giving us the relations i guess pretty much neat uh, so so they have the training testing split again that's pretty much standard nothing new so this is their final score, which they have presented. Like they had score for different instances. Like it contains thousand instances or nine hundred instances. So what they did is uh, they have instances like they have three different models. One is using only syntactical features. One is only using lexical features, and one is using both the features. So now what's happening is uh, they have different like. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or eleven, probably ten or eleven different relations that they come up. And they found out that if you are considering about a film relation, syntactical feature outperforming other both, and uh, like in place place of both, uh, syntactic and both the lexical and syntactic features are performing the same. So probably in in case of thousand instances, both the features combination is giving them a good score. So again, uh, it's like a different kind of features that are working for different kinds of things. But uh, in overall, just uh, I guess it's pretty much neat. Yeah, that's it for now, guys. All right, thanks.